If you're here, good chances are you're submitting countless of resumes and cover letters without getting any responses from your dream companies. And you might ask yourself, so what? Ciao guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Laura and well, I've been in your position and I'm here to tell you that a killer CV can change everything. How do I know? Well, because my CV landed me offers from Amazon, Google and Uber. And well, today I'm revealing the resume that I use to apply. Obviously, I cover some of uh, confidential information, but it's almost identical to the one I use to get to my current position. Crafting a resume is not difficult, but you do need to incorporate the right strategy to craft an effective one. And for that, I'll share my 10 best tips on how to write the best CV. And by the way, some of you sent over resume to review to my inbox, and so I will incorporate those in this video to give you real practical tips on how to improve your resume. And so if you're ready to learn how to create a winning CV that will take your career to the next level, then keep watching. Tip one, use one page and use it right. It's crucial to keep your CV within only one page as recruiters usually spend only a few seconds reviewing each one. Fortunately, most of the CVs that you guys sent me uh, were all within one page, but one of them actually uh, has not one not two, not three, but four pages. So here I just wanted to bear in mind that even Elon Musk CVs is on one page. So if he can make it, we can all do the same. And so use bullet points to make your CV concise and easy to read and make sure to use the space on the page effectively by prioritizing the most relevant information and using white space to create a clean and organized look. However, I want you to see this CV and see what you think. The first thing that comes to my mind is that white space is there, but that's even too much of it. And so even without start reading it, in my head, I'm already thinking, okay, this person probably doesn't have a lot of experience since there are not many stuff in here. And trust me, it's not about the experience you have. Even if you haven't worked before, you can still fill up a full page. Tip number two, don't be modest. People love modesty, but they do not hire it. Remember this when applying for a job. And I also want you to remember that applying to a big tech company and to a role that has a quite broad job description, there will certainly be so many candidates throwing an application there. So this is not the time to be humble. And I'm not asking you to be cocky or arrogant, but there is a difference between being confident and modest. So give them a reason to choose you over the others and remember you are in a competition. Be aggressive and do not hold yourself back. Try your best to make your resume appear as impressive and impactful as possible and adopt a winning mindset. Tip three, grab attention on the first section. The first section of your CV is critical and it is often the first thing that potential employers will see. You want to grab their attention and make them interested in learning more about you. This is your chance to make a strong first impression and stand out from the other applicants. So use this section to showcase your most impressive accomplishment and skills and make sure to tailor it to the specific job you're applying for. A strong first section can set you apart from the competition and increase your chances of getting an interview. Obviously, you need to respect the chronological order, um, hence the first section should be related to the most recent experience you have. But if you have worked on multiple stuff in your last role, make sure to start with the most juicy one, even if it's not really the latest one. So go ahead and double check how powerful is the first paragraph of your resume. Tip number four, make yourself findable. Make it easy for recruiters to learn about you. Start with the header and make sure to include your LinkedIn profile. The goal is to encourage recruiters to navigate your profile for a longer period of time and keep them curious about who you are. The same goes for GitHub. If you have worked on personal projects, point them to the source code and let them know that you are indeed uh, good at coding. Lastly, don't forget to embed links. Learning more about you shouldn't be difficult. And for this tip, let me show you one of the CV that I got from you guys. And as you can see here, there is uh, actually contacts at the top, but those are only links. And so if I have only a paper format of the CV, I don't actually see the, the email of the person. It's impossible for me to get in touch. And on this point, I also want to show you an interesting study that was done on more than 100,000 of resumes. And I think this is super interesting. And so at first glance, the implication seems to be pretty simple. 
Having a LinkedIn profile linked on your resume gives you a much higher chance of landing a job interview. But if you take a closer look, having a basic LinkedIn profile actually decreases your chances of getting a callback. And so this means that you're better off hiding your LinkedIn profile if you're not putting any effort into it. And to me, this applies to all other links you're providing too. So only include your LinkedIn profile if you are taking good care of it. Tip number five, education goes last. One common mistake candidates make in their resume is putting education first. Don't do that, especially if you're already active in the field. Even if you're a student, put experience at the top if you have any internship or similar. Remember, you're not applying to a school, you're applying to a company. And here again is a CV that I got from you guys. And as you can see, again, common mistake of putting the education first. What do you think is the number one thing that companies look for? Your education? No. It's always the work experience. So you waste those precious first seconds of the recruiter's attention by putting your experience at the bottom. Tip number six, exaggerate. And let's dive deeper into experience here. For example, one of the bullet points in my CV says, created multiple dashboards in Tableau to gain insights on OKR's progression and track omni-channel results metric. This resulted in saving around 320 hours per year through automation. Now, this was definitely an estimate that we calculated with my team, since this was a long-term project and I've been part of just some phases of it. The point is that embellishing your impact is acceptable as long as it's not a lie. For instance, I can definitely explain the logic and rationale of this figure, but I cannot fully demonstrate that that was the actual result achieved by the client. And so crafting a compelling narrative is a powerful tool when it comes to present a story. However, fabricating a story with no foundation is dishonest and unacceptable. Tip number seven, quantify. A quick online search will tell you that recruiters and employers prefer resumes with measurable metrics and quantifiable results. And so here I will highlight the part of my CV where I quantify results. And so why do companies prefer resumes with metrics? Because metrics make value easier to understand and quantify. If 10 candidates all say that they were responsible for planning and executing social media campaigns, it's hard to know who did it well and who didn't. Anyone can plan a campaign and anyone can execute that plan. But did the plan result in any tangible outcomes? Did it increase followers or sales? And check this analysis from the same study as before. Almost 60% of the 125,000 CVs analyzed don't have more than three examples of quantifiable results. And here again, an example of a CV that I got from you guys. And as you can see, I read prepare financial management reports. So as you can see, there are a lot of lines where there is no actual uh, quantifiable result. Tip number eight is to add something personal and curious that might start an informal chat with the recruiter. So adding something personal to your CV that is still relevant to the position you're applying for can not only make you stand out from other candidates, but it can also initiate conversation with the recruiter or hiring manager. For example, in my case, I have experience coaching tennis, and so this could show that you have strong communication and leadership skills, which are important soft skills in many industries. But this experience could also demonstrate your ability to work with a various group of people, such as children or athletes. And so by including this personal detail, you may pique the interest of the recruiter or hiring manager and give them a reason to uh, want to learn more about you. And this is exactly what happened to me. And so, yeah, many times happened to me that during the interview, uh, the person interviewing me asked me about my tennis skills. And then, you know, we just started the conversation. And so the whole interview became a bit more uh, relaxed and uh, we kind of clicked in this way with the interviewer, which is definitely something that is positive for you. Tip number nine, avoid using the word beginner. Value yourself as you are worth much more than you think. So stop putting labels like entry level or beginner on proficiency levels like medium SQL or beginner Python. Guess what? It's never too late to explain your expertise level. When someone asks, don't close the door up front by framing yourself as a novice. At this point, you are not. If you are crafting a professional resume, Think like a pro, act like a pro, and be a pro. And always remember, confidence is key when it comes to impressing potential employers. And if you're not at least 50% confident about a specific skill, then 
just leave it out. Tip number 10, remove buzzwords and cliches. Resumes that mention that you are a responsible person or talk about how highly motivated you are, accomplish one thing and one thing only. They make your reader want to pull their hair out. I get it. As a job seeker, you want to make sure that people understand that you are a professional, someone to be respected, who adds value. But packing your resume with buzzwords and jargon achieves the exact opposite. It only serves to muddy the waters and make your value harder to understand. And there you go. These are my top 10 tips on how to craft an effective resume with the one that I used to get offer from some of the big tech companies. And actually feel free to download this template for free from the link in the description. I created one in Google Docs instead of Word file so that anyone can easily download it and edit it. I hope my 10 tips help you craft a superb resume and don't forget to hit like and subscribe because this helps me tremendously. And well, ciao for now and see you in the next one.